good morning to all of you so today we are going to uh, discuss about the basis set so it's the continuation uh, from the ab initio uh, methods so in last few classes we have discussed about the hartree-fock uh, methods that is the simplest ab initio method and in hartree-fock method you have seen that we can uh, actually assume we that electrons are moving independent to each other and they are actually facing the repulsion uh, uh, from uh, uh, for a particular one electron is facing a repul uh, repulsion of the average cloud of created by all other electrons so uh, there uh, was that all uh, electron wave function that is uh, like multi electron wave function or n electron wave function was expressed as the product of n one electron wave function so that was the hartree-fock product and that hartree-fock uh, hartree product also has some problem uh, related to the spin and probably anti-symmetry principle uh, so uh, that was finally solved by using the Slater determinant so now uh, we got the uh, form of wave function but uh, the main problem now in there that from where we get the initial gaze of this uh, form okay so that is actually shortcomings of uh, Hartree-Fock theory that we uh, uh, the main problem the is that that uh, they do not prescribe a mathematically feasible procedure to getting get the initial gaze for the MOA function psi i for the iterative process. So we actually have the form of the wave function. So we know how to uh, make a refinement through some iteration, but we don't know the how to get the initial gaze. Okay. So this is an a shortcomings or a problem in Hartree-Fock method and also the wave functions uh, are so complicated that they uh, contribute nothing to a quality of understanding of the electron distribution because uh, what we in as a chemist we know uh, that the electron distribution in the molecule which actually explains the reactivity mainly okay. So, uh, like uh, in case of atoms, uh, we uh, could use we could use the extrapolate uh, uh, of the hydrogen atom wave function that you can easily get that you can get from the uh, exact solution of the Schrodinger equations. As you know that uh, we can solve exactly for hydrogen atom, and we have the idea of the hydrogen atomic orbital. So, what we can do, we can take the sa same functions of the hydrogen orbital and we can use the, uh, that in for higher atomic numbers only taking into account the increase of atomic number and the screening effect of inner electrons uh, of on outer uh, at once so for atoms that can be uh, the gas can be the hydrogen atom uh, or vitals but for molecule we have uh, 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 no such suitable approach to get the gas okay so there is uh, no prototype species occupying a place analogous to that of the hydrogen atom in the hierarchy of atoms so uh, there are no direct relations of molecular pro properties with the nature of constituent atoms also so how we can uh, get the gaze of the basis uh, uh, the uh, gaze of the wave functions that is the idea of basis set actually <laughs> So, in 1951, Ruthan and Hall actually independently point out these problems, uh, how can it solve. So, uh, what they have done, they uh, actually representing MOs as a linear combination of basis function. Okay. So, Ruthan's paper was more general and more detailed than Hall and the method is sometimes called the Ruthan method. Okay. So, for a basis uh, functions expansion uh, of MOs, so one molecular orbital can be explained as a linear combination of a lots of basis functions and we can write that like psi1 uh, is a wave function so it can be the basis function of uh, uh, linear combination of the basis function phi1 phi2 phi3 and total phi m where c uh, is the cxx means c11 c21 c31 these are all the coefficients and this phi are called the basis functions okay so this equation one can be uh, written is more compact form like here that is uh, psi i is equal to summation of s is equal to 1 to m c s i phi s okay so m is the total number of basis functions that we have uh, shown in here so total m number of basis functions are linearly combined to express one wave function and uh, uh, phi s is actually s basis, fun, uh, basis function so this is just compact form of these all equations 
and c is the uh, coefficient of this this is function of ith mo okay so conventionally actually roman uh, letters have been used uh, for the wave function and greek letters for the basis function okay like phi uh, so i j k l uh, for the size and r s t u for the phi we have used here for this uh, expression okay so now uh, from where we get the basis functions that is the uh, next challenge so uh, let's see that this mo can be extended in terms of m basis functions m can be anything it can there is no limit so the the basis functions are actually uh, located on atoms because these are uh, we say the atom centered basis function that is for the function of phi x y z where x y z are coordinates of the electron being treated by this one electron function so as because each basis functions may usually be regarded as some kind of atomic orbital finally actually basis functions when linearly combined they are actually uh, finally explained uh, some kind of atomic orbital this linear combination of basis function approach is commonly called linear combination of atomic orbital represented by the mo's so this is uh, quite related because in q quantum uh, mechanics class uh, i have shown you that we can combine the atomic orbitals linearly to form the mo's so here what we are doing we are doing linear combinations of basis functions to form the mo's because we do not have the uh, exact uh, shape of the orbital here so test uh, set of uh, this basis functions because we uh, cannot take only one single basis function we have to take a set of basis functions and that set is for a particular calculation is called the basis set for that particular calculation so uh, how many basis functions we need that is the important thing so we need at least uh, enough special molecular orbitals that uh, can accommodate all the electrons available in the molecule that is at least we need n uh, basis functions or n uh, size for the 2n electron because in one of the orbital we can accommodate two electrons okay so the smallest basis set in ab initial calculations uh, uh, ab initial calculations uh, uh, for each atom at least one basis functions you need for each atomic orbital okay so uh, let's see how we can uh, define the number of basis functions then okay so this uh, actually uh, remember that these basis functions are, will be linearly combined and it will finally express our molecular orbital so let's uh, assume that uh, uh, molecule ch4 which is the same one of the simplest uh, molecule where ca one carbon atoms are there connected with four hydrogen atom so in the carbon if you uh, see the occupied molecular orbital so there are uh, total five orbital that carbon has say, 1s orbital 2s orbital and 3 2p orbital okay and the hydrogen has only one 1s orbital so if you want to uh, express uh, this uh, ch basis set of this ch4 molecule how many basis functions you will need that you need for minimum purpose that one orbital as a one basis function so you need uh, five basis functions for me uh, carbon and also one basis function for hydrogen so total we have five for carbon and four uh, basis functions for four hydrogen atoms so total nine special uh, molecular orbitals we need so at least which could hold 18 electrons for the uh, 18 electrons for uh, the 10 electrons of ch4 we need only five special mo's okay so at least we need five uh, uh, nine uh, basis functions for that and which can actually accommodate 18 electrons but we have 10 electrons so there will be five occupied orbital and another uh, four will be unoccupied orbital virtual orbital okay so there is no upper limit uh, to the size of the basis of a basis set there are commonly many basis functions you can use as many as possible uh, generally uh, you uh, if you take the larger uh, more and more basis functions that is actually give you more accurate results why because of uh, that your electrons uh, movement uh, found more flexible because in the real cases electrons can be uh, more polarizable or more diffuse that we will discuss uh, uh, later so uh, that the, if you use uh, so many basis functions uh, large basis functions then what will happen your occupied orbital will be same because electrons are uh, intact but you will get the many many unoccupied virtual mo's okay 
So in other words, we can explain the number of basis functions m in the expansion can be much bigger than the number of n of pairs of electrons in the molecule. Although only the n occupied uh, special orbital are used to construct the Slater determinant because Slater determinant we uh, used for Hartree-Fock calculations that only for the closed cell molecules. Okay. So uh, this is the basic uh, simple idea of the basis functions. Let me summarize again that we uh, can take any type of uh, function. This can be any type of mathematical functions which uh, actually can express the uh, shape of the orbital. So where electrons can ex uh, have the electrons uh, distributions can be possible. Okay, and where this linear uh, all this uh, basis functions will be linearly combined, they can form the molecular uh, orbitals. And this set of these basis functions to uh, describe the molecular orbital is called the basis set for a particular calculation. Thank you very much.